Well, hello, everybody. Um, we, we've missed you. We really have missed you, and we've decided to check in. I'm Michael K. I'm coming to you live from my house, and coming to you from, I mean, I am Eagle. You know him. Um, he, um, he a, a couple of years ago, we all laughed at him, but he actually built the panic room, and that's where he's coming to us live. <laughs> it was a good investment, I, and it really was. It was. Michael, my, my dream has always been to appear on center stage. I just never imagined it would be this way, ever. All right, if that was your dream, if you had to have one person in a foxhole to help you get out, <laughs> who would it be? It's you, Michael. I always really? it to be you. I really feel hey, that you're way. You're strong, you're <laughs> dependable. All of the things that you want in a foxhole, you bring to the table. Michael, this, uh, this is not the way we thought we would get together, because we always talk about, hey, we're gonna get together, we're going to get the families together, and this is the next best thing, but obviously the goal is one day you and I actually will share a meal together and not just do it via social media. That's the truth, but the, the beautiful thing about us, if those that don't know, we are very anti-condiment, so we have <laughs> a lot in common. I mean, I've never had mustard, ketchup, an egg, I've never had fish, I've never had any of that stuff, and I know you are probably even more peculiar than me. I might actually be more peculiar than you. I don't know if anyone's ever said that, Michael. I'm, I might be the first to actually come out and verbalize it. No, no ketchup, no mustard, uh, no salad dressing, because I don't eat salad. So you're not going to have the dressing if you don't have the salad. These are interesting tidbits that I'm sure people have been, have been starving for. You know what? If you have the dressing without the salad, you're essentially having soup. And I've never had soup. <laughs> I like soup. <laughs> you do like soup. I hate the whole slurping aspect of it. It bothers me. Oh, I, my <laughs> over under for the word slurping was two minutes. We came under. You, you Beautiful. The term slurping less than two minutes in. All right. So uh, this is this is very odd. I mean, we're trying to have some fun, but it's a very serious time uh, in our world. Uh, is your family all home or your kid? I know um, your son is in LA with the Clippers. Has he made his way back home? He has. Uh, Michael, my son Noah came back Thursday night from LA. My daughter was studying in Australia. Really? She, uh, she returned on Friday night. So the timing was about as perfect as it could have been in terms of all the travel angst. And it's great to have them both here. Again, not the way we thought we were going to have a reunion in the month of March, but it's been really terrific for our family to to get together, but a lot of nervousness. And I understand there's still a great deal of nervousness out there because people are scattered around. You have young kids. So five Michael, and seven. So the house is like weird. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. And I believe is, is there some homeschooling going on right now? Jody is getting worn out because she doesn't do anything halfway. So she's like teaching a full curriculum. It's, it's unbelievable. And so, you know, Charlie's in kindergarten and Callie's in first grade. And she's teaching both of them different curriculum. So at the end of the day, Jody's kind of uh, worn out. Could we Zoom that? Because I'd like to maybe do a little Billy Madison thing where <laughs> I catch up on some of the things I missed as a youngster. That would be cool. I bet you weren't good with blocks. I'm just I guessing. Not good with blocks. Not a good share. <laughs> I had a lot of issues. The, the fact that I've used the term Zoom now uh, shows you that I've come a long way in technology. Because up until two days ago, I just assumed people were talking about the 1970s kids show that I watched on PBS that you also watched, I'm sure. Zoom. Got a Zoom. I was not. Was that a dog? Not my dog. Really? I heard a dog. Oh, so. Do we have somebody else on the call? <laughs> I, it must be a little puppy. Um, I never, I, for some reason, I, I wasn't that bright. I, I didn't really watch Channel 13. So I never like, watched Sesame Street or Zoom. It was a free channel, Michael. I don't know if you were familiar. Well, we didn't have cable then, so. <laughs> I didn't either. Free channel. No cable. Two, four, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen. Thirteen. Yeah. That's all. Those were the days. And I was happy. It was a simple <laughs> life. <laughs> now, are you staying sharp play by play wise? Because I, I see Joe Buck is having people uh, yeah. come in. Uh, I have a, a little method that I'm staying sharp. My son, who's five, super into baseball. Yeah. So he has learned how to use YouTube and he has he has listened and watched every one of Aaron Judge's home run. So then he takes a bat in the living room 
and I have to recreate every single call in exact detail, <laughs> which is very, very difficult. And I said, you know, I'm going to blow up my voice, but he doesn't quite understand that. So we do at least, I'd say, 40 to 50 calls a night. That is, that is tremendous. <laughs> uh, honestly, that, that is a great thing. First of all, it's great bonding uh, for you two. And it keeps you, keeps you sharp, keeps you ready mentally. Uh, I, I did find myself looking back because of this time of year on a bunch of old NCAA tournament games. And I do find myself feeling the urge to call the action. So uh, I have done that a little bit in my office. I'm probably going to expand it. I might open it up to some old Nets games as well. My, my son and I, I must admit, Noah, although he does play-by-play -play for the Clippers, we were not the family that grew up doing play-by-play -play at the dinner table. It wasn't like, pass the mashed potatoes. Oh, the tacos. That never really was our thing. But maybe we should start. That would be a, a nice be a great time. time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I always want you know, you mentioned watching games. and I, 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 When I watch baseball games now, I don't really watch the game. I'm watching yeah. it as if I'm announcing it. And, oh, and I'm no. not critiquing so much. But it does take away the joy of watching the game because – you're almost looking at the way it's being produced. Do you do that? Yeah, very similar because, first of all, you call so many games over the course of a year, your brain now is set up in that manner of seeing things through a certain way, through the spectrum of how you would handle it, how you would navigate. And I find myself doing the same thing, even just sitting back watching the Super Bowl. I can't just watch the Super Bowl. I do think about how I might phrase something or an inflection level or where I would punch a word. I, I think that's fairly common for announcers. The problem is when it spills over into your everyday life and you start annoying people at the dry cleaners and things of that nature. That, that's, that's an area you don't want to venture into. Then you're just considered odd. All right. Well, people consider me that, so I'm comfortable with it. Now, I see that you're growing a little bit of a beard, and as of yesterday... Really? I had a really bushy beard. And then I started reading stories that that's not good in this time because COVID-19 could get stuck in the beard. So I actually shaved last night. All right. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that to me. I made the thought in my mind of when they called the action of, all right, I'm going to do something that I haven't done. Basically. That's what I thought. Yeah. Senior year of high school, I attempted to grow a mustache so that I could buy liquor. That was... That was my thought process, that right. I would look older. I did not. It just looked like pudding <laughs> draped over my lip. So uh, I've not attempted to grow any facial hair since that point for the most part. And I feel like, like a soap opera version of the evil Iron Eagle, like Ryan Eagle. It's, it doesn't feel right when I look in the mirror. It actually is growing nicely, though. You think so? Yeah, it looks pretty good. Thanks, You're going with the goatee, not the full beard. No, no, no. No, I'm going for the full beard. It's just not growing anywhere. I'm going to have to take a Sharpie at some point and just start mm. filling in and give myself mutton chops. But I'm going to give it a shot, and uh, we'll see. It, it, may take, it may take another three to four months before you see any real additions on this side. Thanks for noticing. I'm like, you got I it. I don't believe yours was bushy though. I think you're, you're maybe pulling my leg on, on the bushy quality. Well, I mean, it wasn't real. It was eight days. And the thing that really got me, Ian, is it was all white. And you know, when my son says, are you going to be like Santa Claus? I, I kind of thought that was the time to get rid of it because yeah. then you're starting to scream what your age is. You know, at least it's not all white in my hair. But in the beard, all white. Yeah, not, Papa Smurf is not yeah, is not, not the way to go. Is not no. the way to go. But I'd I'd like to see you maybe bring it back and and we can compare, contrast at some point. Whatever you like. You know what I'm impressed with? I mean, so much about you impresses me, but this is the first time we're doing this. And you obviously already have a clothing deal with Nike, which is amazing. <laughs> How many people can pull that together that quickly? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, it's funny. The, the baseball travels do not take you to Portland to, to no. the shop, the employee shop. And what ends up happening uh, with the NBA, they do often set you up there. The problem is you end up buying a lot of stuff 
that you don't need. And then you ship it back home. You forget about it for two weeks. I took the lowest possible shipping. It, it came via camel. <laughs> and I get it like three weeks later and I start going through stuff. I'm like, what is this? Why, why, why would I have ever chosen this? So yes, I do have a collection of, of Nike gear that I chose in haste. And then eventually <laughs> I wear none of it. So this is, this is one of the items. Thanks. Mike. Now I, I've heard that you get great deals there. How you great do. a deal. You do. Oh, is it like 50% deal? off. Like 50% off. Uh, you convince yourself at the time that this is really stuff you need. <laughs> and then you get home, you go, I haven't worn a jogging suit since 1979. This is not something that I'm going to use in my everyday life. But uh, next time we do this, I'll, I'll work in a different brand that, that I uh, have a side hustle on. Yeah. I've got, I've got something I could put on it. It could be like the Al Sharpton look for both of us. <laughs> a little velour sweatsuit, you know? I like it. I, yeah. Well, I mean, you and I, let, let's just be honest here. We did not talk about anything prior to this. That We kept no. it Regis and Kathy Lee-esque. Right. And to me, that's, that, that's a little more authentic. So Absolutely. Add, if anything, we are authentic. <laughs> yeah. How are you filling your time? You still have your daily radio show, yes? Yep. So I'm doing that from three until seven. And, you know, I check in on class every now and then. I go, I do the gym for them and... And then uh, to give Jody a break, I'll let, you know, Charlie has to read a certain amount of books to me and he does that. But uh, I'm really, my mind is sometimes my worst enemy and I'm filled with anxiety and fear. And I'm not ashamed to admit that. I have no idea what the future holds and I'm just crossing my fingers that it's all good. But I spend a lot of the day worrying. I don't know if you're like that. Yeah, I've tried to turn off my brain to some degree. Uh, I have some experience with that based on my schedule with football and basketball usually taking me into early to mid-June. And from mid-June to early August, I, I've tried the last few years, Michael, to do very little and shut off right. my brain. So I'm taking that mentality and moving it over to this time of year. But it's hard not to pay attention. You're someone that seeks information. I also seek information. We find solace in that. And with all the information out there, it's a lot. And it bombards you as you try to uh, come up with coping mechanisms in this time. I, I also find, because let's face it, this is your life and this is my <laughs> life, the sports part of it, the component. It's often a catalog for all of us and it allows us to set up our week. Yes, you're calling the action during the summer for the Yankees, but as a fan, I'm setting up my week based on what day the game is, what night the game is. Obviously, football season following a very strict schedule and routine and regimen of preparation, performance, basketball. And without that, it, it, feels, it feels very empty. And it, it brings to the surface how badly you want it back and how badly you miss it day to day. That's what I'm feeling on a daily basis right now. Now I'm wondering, you know, in a more a practical sense, because again, to everybody watching this, the most important thing is that everybody stays healthy. Yep. But is there a cutoff point you think, Ian, for basketball where it would not be able to return if they're not back by X? Michael, I think they have a number of contingency plans in the plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D. Plan A and Plan B are probably out the window, and they've now moved to Plan C, Plan D, Plan E. Uh, there's probably a plan in place where they believe they can come back without fans in venues and televise the games and still finish out the regular season to some degree and start the playoffs and then take a wait-and-see approach. That might push the date a bit farther, but yes, they have to have a date on a board knowing full well that they can't complete the season just from a logistical standpoint and a time standpoint. I don't know what that date is. We're not there yet, but I feel like the NBA has been very vigilant in trying to stay ahead and trying to come up with a quality plan so that they're just not floored by all this when it comes to a head. How about baseball? What's, what's your feeling right now with baseball? I, I would say, you know, I, we had Mariano Rivera on the show the other day and he said, you can't have a 60 game season. He said, that's not representative of what a champion is. So nobody has told me this, but I'd say, I'd say the minimum would be a hundred games. 
Yep. So you'd have to you'd have to get them back to another spring training because the, uh, Mark Shapiro, sure. GM of the Blue Jays, they said they're going to need four weeks because they're going to be so so you know no brought down to zero. So I would say they have to get back to spring training by sometime in June, and then you start in July. Maybe you push the uh, you push it down to November where the postseason and and this could change the world forever where they could play games in neutral sites in domes. And I, I thought about this with basketball too. You think there's any way that they shift the basketball calendar because of this? Because I've always wondered why isn't basketball played in the summer? It's playing the summer Olympics. So what, could they start December 25th where that's a big day in the NBA and then play through to some point in the summer? Michael, you're not alone. There are a lot of people that believe that would be the best move going forward for the NBA, that this might allow them to put that plan intact. I don't know that there had been a complete movement and solidarity amongst owners that that was the best plan. But considering the ratings in November, December, and the behemoth that is the NFL, uh, the NBA might look at this as a springboard to, to making some changes and pushing their calendar into June, deeper June, July, and maybe even early August. And it may not be the worst idea for, uh, for the NBA moving forward. They're going to consider it. Uh, clearly, right now they're focused on trying to finish up 1920 and get a postseason in what has been a really interesting season. You know, yep. It's funny with the NBA because they've built up so much interest outside of the games free agency, the draft, even summer league, they've created pockets of interest that maintain their sport over a 12 month calendar. The games in the previous years, because Golden State was so good and Cleveland with LeBron had been playing at such a high level, the games had lacked a little bit of entry, which is unfair because Golden State played such an incredible brand of basketball. And we're going to look back on that stretch for Golden State and say, I'm not sure we'll ever see that again. This might give them a way to create more interest and get people excited again about the games because this season really was a fascinating year, the way things were playing out of the Western Conference and even the questions of the East, whether or not Giannis Adetokounmpo could lead his team to a championship or would, be there, would there be another team that could step forward in the Eastern Conference? I'm wondering, quick basketball, final question on that. If the, the season resumes in June, Kevin Durant back, Kyrie yeah. Irving back? We've got that question a lot. People uh, are posting that as a possibility. Durant and his people have downplayed it. Obviously, Kevin right now, the focus after his positive test for the right. coronavirus. Uh, clearly, it's just all about health. But yeah, you allow your mind to wander a bit, Michael, and whether or not Durant from those little video snippets that we've seen, and I think you've seen them as well. Yeah. He looks good. He yeah. looks like himself. He looks like a player that could step in and play today. Yeah, the question would be probably posed to him. What do you want to do? And I think they would lean on him. Medically, my understanding is from this point on, he can play. It's now a question is the team comfortable? Is he comfortable? And then look at the timing on Kyrie. He got the shoulder surgery done at a time where if you looked at a four to six week period, it would be right around the date that you're describing. Amazing. NBA. That would be wild. All right. Let's, uh, let's be uh, the responsible adults now before we wrap this up and uh, do a bit of a PSA. You have two children yep. um, that are of the age that they would be cavorting around Clearwater Beach, but I'm sure that you raised, raised them better. Yeah. It, it freaks me out, Ian, as I sit and watch the world on TV and on Twitter, that young people just don't get it, and they don't understand that the way to stop this is to stay in. And I would tell everybody that's fans of the Nets and the Yankees and watch us on Yes, Absolutely. just stay in. I mean, there was a great meme that was out earlier. You know, our relatives went to war. For our future we're just being asked to stay home and i would think that that's an easy thing yeah and, and it's it's confounding to even think that we live in a world where there's this mentality of but not me but not me right no you you could be a carrier uh, 
you could infect someone, even though you might not be showing symptoms, someone that physically can't handle it. Uh, our elders who are certainly vulnerable and at risk, be safe, be secluded at this time. Uh, if this is what is being asked of our citizens, I don't think it's a huge ask. Right. Stay home, chill out. Don't push the envelope at this stage and think about others. This is the time to be selfless. This is the time to understand that your actions could affect so many people around you. I'm with you, Michael. It's, it's pretty much a no brainer. Uh, let's, yeah. let's just face it. Don't, uh, don't be a moron. And it, now the message. we have given you all of you out there 20 minutes of your day that, okay, now it's yeah. 20 minutes that we just took off like that. Like that. And it felt like what? 17 minutes. Easy. Easy. <laughs> like 17, but we made it 20 minutes into magic. Zoom <laughs> magic. <laughs> oh, I'm going to finish it up like I do on Center Stage. That's Iron Eagle. I'm Michael K. And this was not Center Stage. It was fun talking to all of you. And we'll talk to you again real soon. Take it easy, Iron. I've always wanted to hear that, Michael. Thank you. <laughs>